and 1965. At the Maple Leaf Awards, they preceded the Junos. In this next song, lead guitarist Bob Clark is featured on Las Vegas Scene, a song he wrote 29 years ago. Now, does anybody have a quarter? Oh, thanks. Here, I'll play it for you now. Flip it in. M4. Here's Las Vegas Scene. instrumentals and we had success with those that's what we yeah original the material initially. Was, you know, speaking for myself uh, have the maturity to write the kind of lyrics because you know we were so young and in yeah. those days uh, well you know, I, I remember getting a few tunes written and, and getting them uh, some b-sides and it was it was great but uh, I think I then think we, we started are... realizing how difficult it is Love Drops is probably one of the best-known songs done by Barry Allen and the Rebels. With this number one hit, Barry claimed honors as most promising male vocalist in 1965, and then backed it up with top male vocalist in 1966. Here's what the Rebels themselves have to say about Love Drops. Mickey and Sylvia had that song out originally. It was an album cut, I think. I think it was. They were the people who did Love is Strange. Remember that yeah. huge hit? I think this was an album. Yeah. And then uh, we worked up an arrangement <clears throat> of it, and uh, we just tried to do it in the, the highest key that we could sing it in, because that was one of Norman's things, too. If, we, if you sang a song in G, he'd make you record it in A. Yeah. And so it was always get out the pointy six time to hit yeah, all the and I had to sing parts. a third above. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, at that time, we kind of really lucked into a, a song, and uh, Stu set up the, the feel off the top, and that's how the record started, was, was with that drum sound, and there was that Norman Petty drum sound.
think potentially that was the song that could have made it as far as, you know, like the big time, so to speak. Uh, just didn't quite make it. But if it had, we, we would have been up there with yeah. the Guess Who and all the rest. Got off yeah. We had a good hit across, really uh, across Canada, but uh, it, it started in the U.S., but it just, it just we didn't just didn't quite, quite have the backing to, yeah, we didn't to, yeah. to push it. And it's funny, speaking of the Guess Who, uh, like, they were real pals of ours. We worked so many jobs with them. I think the second happiest bunch of guys in the world when Shaking All Over hit for them was us. Yeah, yeah. Because correct. they had done the same circuit, paid the same you know, dues, made those same drives, and all of a sudden our pals were, you know, famous. They were, yeah. remember the I thought it was great. First night we saw Burton with the guest yeah. who was at the Trino. On, Trino on board. We were all, I can remember it so distinctly. We were all sitting up on the balcony there and looking down and saying, this sort of saying, kid. Oh, there's a monster coming yeah. on. Because this guy was just a scraggly, skinny little runt, and he was he just wailing. He walked out there and took over. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Don't get the idea that we wouldn't try to crucify those guys on a double bandstand. We would do anything. <laughs> <laughs> we'd rehearse till our fingers fell off just to get one inch ahead of those guys. And we'd, oh, we'd pull stuff out of the hat, and they'd be doing the same thing. It was really a nice... Uh, it was a competitive atmosphere, but it was really nice, you know, because we were kind of the two Western Canada bands that were... We're recording.